He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. A great majority of people spend a lot of time listening to other people's interpretations of the scriptures. The workers of iniquity in and out of religion invest a great amount of time convincing the people to accept their interpretations of the scriptures. Israelites, religious doctrines don't have the final say in what you believe. Don't give the workers of iniquity that kind of power over you. The high level workers of iniquity barely encourage the people to read the scriptures for themselves. The synagogue of Satan know the moment the people begin to read for themselves and allow the Holy Spirit to guide them into all truth, their lies cannot supersede the truth of the Most High's words. The truth is putting a spotlight on their lies. Because the gospel of truth is being heard in all nations, the synagogue of Satan can no longer hide behind their falsehoods and take refuge in their lies. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. The spiritual wickedness in high places are where the moment the people begin to listen to the instructions of the true Messiah by taking up their cross and follow him to the Father, the synagogue of Satan won't be able to control the people through religion. As long as the workers of iniquity control your faith through religion, they can control your life. Remember, religion is witchcraft and idolatry. Anyone who practice witchcraft and idolatry are an enemy to the Most High. Religion is the gateway to witchcraft and idolatry. The scripture said all the gods of the Gentiles are idols. The Gentiles practice witchcraft and idolatry in their religious institutions. All of their offerings and sacrifices are made to their idol gods. The workers of iniquity mislead the people into believing they make their offerings and sacrifices to the God of Israel. If you read the scriptures for yourself, the scriptures told us in the first book of Corinthians that the Gentiles make their sacrifices to devils and not to the Most High. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. The Most High don't want us to have any type of fellowship with devils. Israelites, the time have come for you to listen to what the words of the Most High is revealing to us. The scripture said, all, not some, but all of the sacrifices the Gentiles make in their religious institutions, they make to devils and not to the Most High, the Father. As an Israelite, you should be concerned about hearing the Gentiles making offerings to devils and not to the Most High. This truth is in the Bible many of you hold in high esteem. Israelites, don't let the Satans distract you from seeing what is written in front of you. We know the sacrifices of the Gentiles are made to idols. Why do we associate with their religious beliefs? We should have nothing to do with their pagan practices. To the Israelites that are not afraid to venture into books that were removed from the Bible and deemed to be a counterfeit from the synagogue of Satan that rule over you, the book of Jubilees let us know that the Gentile nations have spirits of authority that rule over them to lead the Gentiles away from the Most High. For Ishmael and his sons and his brothers and Esau, the Lord did not cause to approach him, and he chose them not because they are the children of Abraham, because he knew them, but he chose Israel to be his people. And he sanctified it and gathered it from amongst all the children of men, 
for there are many nations and many peoples and all are his and over all have he placed spirits in authority to lead them astray from him. The Israelite nation is the only group of people that don't have spirits of authority over them. The Most High, the Father, is the God in Israel. The Father had placed his angels over his people to assist his people. Because the Most High didn't put spirits of authority over his people, the replacement doctrine taught by the high-level workers of iniquity and religion is a false doctrine. The high-level workers of iniquity use the replacement doctrine to control the Gentiles that want to serve the God of Israel. The idols of the Gentiles are leading them away from the Most High. If the spirits of authority is leading the Gentiles away from the Most High, why are you serving their gods? Israelites, that is why you should have nothing in common with the Gentiles in their beliefs. Don't cleave to the Gentiles. The Gentiles are supposed to cleave to you. The synagogue of Satan made themselves appear to serve the God of Israel. However, their altars are dedicated to their idol gods. When we enter their religious establishments, we assume the altars in their sanctuary are altars dedicated to the God of Israel. Israelites, we shouldn't assume every altar in the church is built to the God of Israel. As the people that are waking up, we must get into the habit of asking the people who invite us to their place of worship what God is behind their altar. The Most High said that every altar that is built to the Father, also everywhere his name is honored, he would visit the altar and bring blessings. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings, and thy peace offerings, thy sheep and thine oxen. In all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee. And I will bless thee. The Most High said in every place his name is remembered, he would visit and bring blessings. The Israelites and the indigenous black people are the largest group of people that serve Jesus in Christianity. The Most High said he would visit the altar that bears his name and bring blessings. If the Most High is the God in Christianity, how come the Most High didn't visit the altars in your churches? In addition, bless you when you went to the altar calls. The reason your life never changed, but you continue to go around in circles for multiple years. The name of the Most High is not on the altars found in religion. Jesus is not the name of the Father or the Messiah. Therefore, the altars you went to pray and seek the face of the Father is an altar built to the idol gods of the Gentiles. Jesus is the God Christians serve. They made it known. By now you should know that Jesus is not the God to the Israelites. Jesus is also not the God of Israel in the flesh. Jesus is the idol God of the Gentiles. Remember the scripture said all the gods of the Gentiles are idols. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Israelites, we shouldn't continue to make the mistake of serving their gods as the God of Israel. Mistakes such as this cause many Israelites to fall into the sin of idolatry and witchcraft unawares. You cannot have idolatry without witchcraft. They go hand in hand. Witchcraft is using the power of false gods and idols to attack and control a person. A witchcraft ritual consists of a worker of iniquity giving their idol gods a sacrifice upon an altar built to that god. The same rituals are done in Sunday services across the world in religion. Israelites, that is how the Gentiles practice witchcraft in plain sight. Religion disguised the heathens' sorcery in public. Israelites, this is why the Most High made you his temple and put his spirit in you. By the Father doing this, you don't have to enter the abominable temples the Gentiles built to their idol gods. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, but the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. The Most High made it so that we don't have to enter their temples of sins and make sacrifices on their evil altars to idol gods. As the gospel of the kingdom continue to expose everyone, Israelites, I wanted to show you how the heathens deceive you while using the very Bible that's supposed to have the truth of the Most High's words. The synagogue of Satan built religion based on false doctrines. They used the altered scriptures found in the Bible to support their beliefs.
the more I compare the scriptures to the popular doctrines from religion, the most high opened my eyes to show me how his words don't support the foundational beliefs held in high esteem for multiple generations in the church. I wanted to compare religious doctrines against what the Messiah taught his people when he was flesh, as well as with what the scriptures actually say. We are in a truth season, and I wanted the Israelites in the awakening to know the truth. I noticed in the awakening, religious doctrines continue to prevail in the hearts and minds of many Israelites. The Messiah said he would build his church, and the gates of hell would not prevail against it. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The truth will cause every idol to fall and prevent the gates of hell from prevailing against the awakening. If we allow ourselves to continue in the doctrines from religion, the lies and falsehoods of the workers of iniquity will be a stumbling block to us. That is why it's important to allow the truth to make us free. Just as the Most High through the Messiah said he would build his church, the Satans did the same thing through religion. The kingdom of darkness built religion based on falsehoods. The workers of iniquity use scriptures they have altered to make it appear as if the scriptures support their doctrines. If you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you into all truth, the Holy Spirit will expose their lies. One of the foundational scriptures that truly set up religion is the most popular verse in the Bible, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 is a loaded verse. This one verse can put an end to the God in the flesh doctrine. John 3.16 differentiate the father from the son. The verse said God so loved the world. It didn't say Jesus loved the world or the Messiah loved the world, but God the father loved the world. First of all, the most high the father doesn't love the world. Israelites, it's important to use discernment as well as allowing the Holy Spirit to show you the alterations in the scriptures. The Most High doesn't love the world. The Father went as far as to say, if you are a friend to the world, you're an enemy to him. How can the Father condemn us for loving the world in the book of James? And in the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16, it declares the Most High loved the world. Not only does he love the world, but he gave his only begotten son. Israelites, the Most High didn't send his son to die for the world. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Israelites, remember I said we have to get into the habit of asking which God they are referencing. The God of Israel don't love the world. He loved his people and all that does his will by honoring his laws, statutes, and commandments. We cannot associate the God of Israel with loving the world. The scriptures you just heard said otherwise. The God of this world is Satan. Don't mistake the God of this world with the God of Israel. Let us continue. The scripture said, God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. According to religious doctrines, John 3.16 gives everyone an opportunity to obtain everlasting life. John 3.16 is vague about what belief in the Messiah we should uphold to obtain everlasting life. This brings us to another doctrine from Rome that is misleading our people. The doctrine of having to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior to be saved. Religion teach you have to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Some Israelites in the awakening also teach that you have to accept Jesus to some Yahshua as your Lord and Savior. The verse in John 3.16 didn't say anything about accepting the Messiah as your Lord and Savior. The verse said, whosoever believe in him should not perish. What belief must we uphold in the Messiah in order to not perish? Everything the Messiah did was on the behalf of the Father. The Messiah said he's not seeking his own glory. The doctrine he taught wasn't his own doctrine. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. 
if the Messiah is not seeking his own glory, nor is his doctrine his own, why must we accept him to be our Lord and Savior? Accepting the Messiah as our Lord and Savior is making the Messiah our God. The Most High already established himself to be the God of Israel. Why must the Israelites accept the Messiah to be their God as well? Accepting the Messiah to be our Lord and Savior is making him another master to serve. The scriptures clearly said we can't serve two masters. The word Lord in definition is also master. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. The doctrine of having to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior contradict the scriptures in the book of Matthew saying no one can serve two masters. It's either you love one and hate the other, but you can't serve both. The Israelites in and out of the awakening prove that they can't serve two masters. That is why majority of them stop at Messiah. They give the glory of the Father to the Messiah. When they think about their spiritual journey, they think about the Messiah. A small minority few Israelites remember the Father. Most Israelites pray, praise, and worship the Messiah only. That is why you always hear them thinking Jesus or Yeshua. A small group of Israelites acknowledge the Father. The scripture is correct when it say you can't serve two masters. Although some Israelites are aware that the Most High the Father exists, they give the glory of the Father to the Messiah despite the Messiah saying he is not seeking his own glory. Israelites, there is a difference between accepting the Messiah as your Lord and Savior with believing in him. Accepting the Messiah and believing in him are two different things. The reason religious doctrines proclaim you have to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior to establish evil covenants with you. The Most High is a covenant God. He will honor all covenants. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. This is why the Most High warned his people throughout the scriptures to make no covenants with the heathens and with their gods. The Father knew that the Gentiles would lead his people astray through their idol gods. The Father warned his people to stay away from the gods of the heathens. Every covenant you make with their idols, the Most High will honor them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. The Satans use the doctrine of accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior to establish covenants with the people. In order for the Satans to interfere with your life and alter your destiny, they must have a covenant with you. When you have evil dreams, you see masquerading spirits trying to give you something or try to get you to comply with them in the spirit realm. Without a covenant, the Satans can't touch you. They can frustrate you by making your life harder than it needs to be. They do this by oppressing you because they can't touch you. Remember the story of Job in the scriptures? Satan couldn't touch Job because Satan had no covenant with Job. Job was a righteous man that served the most high. The father put a hedge of protection around Job. Satan was aware of this. That is why he said to the Most High to remove the protection from Job. The moment the Most High gave Satan permission to persecute Job, that is when his life started to fall apart. Prior to that, Satan couldn't touch Job. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house? And about all that he hath on every side, thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Israelites, a covenant is an agreement or permission. The Most High gave Satan permission to persecute Job. Without the agreement, Satan couldn't touch Job. The Satans use religion to establish covenants with many people. Over 80% of this world have some sort of religious faith. The Satans have covenants with over 80% of this world's population. 
Remember, all religion is from the kingdom of darkness. The covenant the people established with making Jesus their Lord and Savior gave the kingdom of darkness the access it needed to influence many people in the B system. The people don't realize they've established an evil covenant with the kingdom of darkness. Some people believe they are honoring John 3.16 when they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. If the people read the verse with the Holy Spirit, they will see that they don't need to accept anything to obtain everlasting life. As the chosen people of the Most High, we already have a Savior. That Savior is the Most High, the Father. When religion told us we needed to accept Jesus, we should have asked why. When the Most High said in the scriptures that he was the Holy One of Israel, our Savior. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. It's through the Messiah the Most High would deliver us. That is why the Messiah is our deliverer. The word Messiah also means deliverer. The scripture said in the book of Romans, there shall come out of Zion a deliverer. The Messiah is our deliverer. When you make a covenant with the Satans, you make the Satans your God. When Adam and Eve listened to Satan in the garden, they made Satan their God. Satan became king over Adam and Eve until the Messiah delivered them. Adam and Eve deliverance came when the Messiah became flesh and was hung on a tree. When the Messiah resurrected, the righteous rose with him. To learn more, watch the videos about Melchizedek on this channel. But now, O Adam, by reason of thy fall, thou art under my rule, and I am king over thee. Because thou hast hearkened to me, and hast transgressed against thy God, neither would there be any deliverance from my hands until the day promised thee by thy God. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. And came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Israelites, when you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you made Jesus your God. When you made Jesus your God, you eliminated the Most High, the Father, from your life. Despite the Israelites and indigenous black people serving Jesus with all of their heart and soul, they are still living a defeated life in the B system. Many Israelites didn't realize they traded their glory for the lesser when they accepted the heathen's idol God as their Lord and Savior. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Israelites, this is why you must go deeper when it comes to your spiritual journey. You can't just accept things because the doctrine is popular. Remember, broad is the way that leads to destruction. Many will find a road to destruction. If we take the time to allow the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth, we will see everything that is hiding in the scriptures. The Most High, the Father, already established himself as our Lord and Savior. You don't need another master to inherit the coming kingdom. The Most High have been pleading with his people to return to him. The Most High will not plead with you to accept another master to be your Lord and Savior. The Most High will not share his glory with another. The Messiah is aware the Most High is seeking glory. That is why he said, there is only one that seek glory. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Israelites, when you take the time to read the scriptures for yourself, you will begin to see the truth. Don't listen to the workers of iniquity that influence you to read only the New Testament and discard the other books that don't support their doctrines. They want to keep you from the other books and truth to rule over you. As long as the workers of iniquity have a covenant with you, their sorcery will work against you. Without a covenant, their witchcraft will fail. If you never denounce the idols of the Gentiles, make sure to denounce all of the idols of your father and mother's house. Break the covenants to not be bound by idols. Abraham destroyed his father's idol gods. 
As our knowledge increased, we should share the same zero tolerance towards idols like Abraham, our father. Religion taught you accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior would grant you eternal life. John 3.16 said, if you believe in him, you will not perish, but have everlasting life. The scriptures say one thing and religion say another. Israelites, what must we believe in the Messiah to obtain everlasting life? When the Messiah became flesh, he had a hard time convincing the people that he was the son of God. Majority of the people didn't believe he was the son of God. Even Satan taunted the Messiah when he was flesh to prove he was the son of God. And the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. As you heard for yourself of Satan asking the Messiah to prove he was the Son of God, the Messiah informed Satan that we shouldn't put the Most High the Father to the test. The Messiah spent majority of his time in the flesh convincing the people that he was who he said that he was. Despite the great miracles the Messiah did before the people, he had a hard time convincing many that he was the son of God. When he went to teach in the synagogues, the people was astonished at his great wisdom and authority. However, because he was the carpenter's son and they knew his family, it was difficult for some Israelites and indigenous black people to believe he was the son of God that was promised. Because some people watched the Messiah grow up before them and they knew his family, they were offended by the Messiah's great wisdom and didn't believe he could be the son of God. His own people rejected him. Because of the rejection he experienced in his own country, the Messiah said a prophet had no honor in his own country. The Messiah did little miracles in his place of birth because of their unbelief. And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters? Are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. The Messiah experienced a lot of rejection from a lot of people because of their unbelief. The generation alive during the time the Messiah was flesh had a hard time believing he was the son of God. Many Israelites during that time lacked knowledge. That is why they rejected him and refused to accept he was the son of God. Some Israelites rejected the Messiah because he didn't meet their expectation. A great majority of Israelites thought as soon as the Messiah came, he was going to rule over them like the other kings of the earth. Because the humbled Messiah didn't meet their expectations, they rejected him and didn't believe he was the son of God. The Israelites have a history of rejecting the people the Most High sent to help them. Remember the generation alive during the time of Samuel? They rejected the Most High, the Father, as their king because they wanted a king like the Gentile nations. They wanted a king that would fight in the flesh like the Gentiles. They rejected the Most High, the Father, for a man to rule over them. And all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee. But they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. I'm not surprised by the countless rejection the Messiah experienced because of the Israelites' lack of knowledge and unbelief. 
Some Israelites in this generation continue to reject the Messiah until this day. The Israelites have a history of rejecting their God to serve idols. The Israelites throughout the generations made terrible decisions when it comes to their spiritual journey. This generation is no different. Despite of the great miracles the Messiah did, only a few people was convinced he was the son of God. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the son of God. A large population of the people believed the Messiah was a great prophet. Despite the miracles he did, as well as his powerful teachings, the people believed he was a prophet. Even some of the disciples believe he was a great prophet. A lot of people didn't believe he was qualified to be the son of God. Just like some people don't believe Michael is qualified to be the son of God, despite him being a son of God. To some people, he's another angel. When the Messiah asked Peter, who do the people say that he was? Many said he was a prophet or a reincarnated prophet of old. None of our ancestors believe he was the son of God. Peter was the only disciple that believed he was the son of God because the Most High, the Father, revealed it to him. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. As you can see, Israelites, our ancestors was waiting for the Son of God, not the Most High, the Father in the flesh. The God in the flesh teaching is a false doctrine by the workers of iniquity in religion. They disguise the false Messiah as God in the flesh to get many to accept him as their Lord and Savior. As long as black people believe it's God, they will worship. John 3.16 said that all who believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. The belief the people must have is that the Messiah is the Son of God. Everyone who believe the Messiah is the Son of God have overcome the world. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. A lot of Israelites haven't overcome the world because most Israelite and Gentiles believe he's God the Father in the flesh. Chapter 5 in the book of 1 John went on to say that everyone that believe in the Son of God is his witness and all who don't believe make the Messiah to be a liar. All who believe the Messiah is the Son of God will have eternal life. This corresponds with John 3.16 saying all who believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The scripture said nothing about accepting the Messiah as your Lord and Savior. That is new doctrine from the mother harlot, the Roman Catholic Church. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record, that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. There are countless scriptures in the Bible that confirm that you must believe that Yahshua was the son of God. None of those scriptures said you had to believe the Messiah was God in the flesh, nor do you have to accept him to be your Lord and Savior. Remember, the Messiah came to do the will of the Father, not his own will. The workers of iniquity made you focus on the Messiah in the New Testament and in the end times. Hardly anyone is thinking about the Father. There are countless scriptures saying that you have to believe he was the son of God. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt Believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. But these are written, that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. John chapter 20 verse 31 said, You must believe that the Messiah is the Son of God, and by believing you may have life in his name. 
The scripture said nothing about the Messiah being the most high, the father in the flesh. Israelites, I hope you can hear and see what the scriptures are actually saying to you. The synagogue of Satan's interpretations of the scriptures shouldn't have the final say. Confirm with the father before you pass around doctrines the scriptures don't confirm. The scripture said that you have to believe the Messiah is the son of God, while religion said he is God the father in the flesh and you must accept him as your Lord and Savior. Does the scriptures correspond with the doctrines so many of you have accepted as truth? Israelites, it's important for you to humble yourself and allow the Holy Spirit to show you the truth in the scriptures. If you listen to the doctrines from religion and don't seek the face of the Father for yourself, the Satans will deceive you with their false doctrines. If you allow the scriptures to speak, the truth will reveal itself. Throughout the scriptures, we see the Pharisees fighting with the Messiah by who he was. Due to the Pharisees' unbelief, they accused the Messiah of having a devil. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father and ye do dishonor me. The Messiah went through a lot by the hands of his own people as well as the Gentiles that wanted to slay him. Although it was written in the scriptures for the Messiah to suffer in order for the scriptures to be fulfilled, the Messiah went to great lengths to convince the generation alive when he was flesh, he was the son of God. There's a controversial scripture in the book of Philippians. This verse so happened to be one of my favorite verses. The verse said, every tongue will confess that the Messiah is the son of God. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The verses you just heard are altered. The Most High exalted the Messiah for his obedience. Israelites understand that the Most High the Father won't share his glory with anyone. There's nothing wrong with giving honor to the Messiah. Honoring the Messiah is like honoring the Most High. However, there's a difference between honoring and worshiping. The scripture said in the book of Philippians that every knee will bow. When the scripture said every knee will bow, this means the Messiah will finally get the recognition that belonged to him. When he was flesh, many dishonored him. Many rejected him. So many mistake him for the father. Many people tried to stone him. The Messiah was punched and kicked by his own and the Gentiles. The scripture said they chanted, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. But they cried, saying, crucify him, crucify him. Many people did not believe the Messiah was the son of God. The verses in the book of Philippians is letting us know that everyone will finally see and will confess that the Messiah is the son of God. Everyone that chanted crucify him and all who did not believe will confess that the Messiah is the son of God. The Messiah said in the book of Corinthians, the only people who can say that he is the son of God are the people who have the Holy Spirit because this truth comes only from the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. The reason Peter knew the Messiah was the Son of God, the Most High, the Father revealed it to him. No one can say the Messiah is the Son of God, but by the Holy Spirit. Today, many people don't believe the Messiah is the Son of God. Majority of people in this generation believe the Messiah is God the Father in the flesh. The Holy Spirit didn't reveal this lie to you. All who believe the Messiah is God the Father in the flesh need to read the scriptures. By this great deception, the Satans are destroying many. Instead of teaching truth in religion, the workers of iniquity teach lies to control you. The high level workers of iniquity told you the Messiah was God the Father in the flesh to destroy you. That is how the sin of idolatry continued to prevail in the Israelite community. Israelites, listen to the scriptures. Flee from idolatry.
Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. The Satans through religion told you the Messiah was God in the flesh. Only the Israelites who truly seek the face of the Father will know by the Holy Spirit that the Messiah is the Son of God. The Christian faith calls the people who follow this faith believers. Yet many people don't know the beliefs of the Christian faith. The doctrines taught to the people in religion don't correspond with the teachings the Messiah taught. Their doctrines definitely don't correspond with the scriptures. Israelites, you can't look to the people who ruled over you to help you serve your God in the spirit and in the truth. They don't know the God of Israel. You definitely shouldn't put your trust in their words. The Messiah said men live by every word that comes out of the mouth of the Most High. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. In order to know what the Most High is saying in this generation, you need the Holy Spirit. Israelites, I hope you're starting to see the importance of knowing what you worship and serve. From now on, I hope you start to boldly ask the people who want to lead you to their God, who is their God? Don't assume they serve the God of Israel. For countless generations, our ancestors in this generation was led to believe the Christian faith served the God of Israel. When you allow the Most High to teach you the truth by his spirit, you will realize the Christian God is an idol God. The time have come for the Israelites in the awakening to serve their God. Don't let the Satans mislead you with their false doctrines. Don't allow the doctrines of devils from religion to override the truth in the awakening. A lot of Israelites in the awakening are still under the Christian spell. Israelites, the time have come for you to completely come out of her. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Israelites, when you take the time to seek the face of the Most High, the Father will show you everything that is hiding in plain sight. Reading the scriptures the way your enemies have taught you will keep you enslaved spiritually. If you allow the Holy Spirit to reveal truth to you, the scriptures will begin to open itself to you. Remember, the words of the Most High are alive. Israelites, let the Most High, the Father, have the final say in what you believe. The gospel of the kingdom is being heard in all the nations at this time. Take advantage of the truth the Most High is making available. Read the scriptures with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the only one who know the truth of the Most High's words. Listen to the Spirit of the Most High that abide with you. The time have come for you to purge the doctrines of devils out of your life and welcome the truth with gladness. The truth shall make you free. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him.